Good morning, everyone. And today it's a very short lecture. Um, just to give you, like, not all of you, but to many who don't have the concept of what is autoantibodies. We have done one already one disease which is called as rheumatoid or arthritis, which is again caused by autoantibodies, but in the next week, my lectures will be about SLE or systemic lupus erythematosus. And as in that one, uh, and all the next lectures uh, in rheumatology are mostly due to auto antibodies or due to auto antibody. Uh, so that's why, like, I decided that you know we should um, discuss what is auto antibody and why it is important in knowing uh, one more purpose of making this lecture is that uh, in exams like uh, um, steps uh, usmle exams or um, plab exams like this you know um, there are questions which um, basically tells or ask you questions related to like they give you scenarios the patient have this this or this the sign and symptoms and when we had done the antibodies testing and we found like these antibodies come back as positive so um, it's not important to remember all those anti uh, like all the auto antibodies but uh, you have to memorize the main autoantibodies and they are going to help you in answering those questions. So when you memorize like the important autoantibodies, so the things become clear uh, and especially the autoantibodies which are highly specific for certain conditions. So you will be having edge when you are going to solve those questions because when you get one keyword uh, autoantibody name, so basically you reach the diagnosis. So <clears throat> now, uh, what is autoantibody? Okay, um, autoantibody, autoantibody. So autoantibody, um, of course, like uh, as we know that you know, antibodies are produced by our immune system, and why we pr they produce antibodies are simply. Um, uh, the antibodies they are made or they are directed against a foreign protein uh, you can see this one uh, for example um, there there can be tumor cells uh, which are tumor associated antigens which are going to circulate in the blood so see this is these are the antigens uh, this is like you know you can say highly simplified type of picture just to show you and see the B cells then there is activated B cells and the B cells will differentiate into plasma cells as well as memory B cells and the plasma cells are the one which are going to produce auto antibodies and see auto antibodies are circulating in the blood so uh, like we are studying autoimmune conditions right um, so now um, basically the B cells, they produce proteins uh, in two ways. One is randomly and one is in response to some foreign protein or substance within the body like a tumor. Tumor cells are substances which are within the body. So the definition is simply autoantibody is produced. Of course, it's a protein which is produced by the immune system. Okay of the body that is directed against one or more of the individual's own proteins okay and now why this definition see now now there's a word own proteins that is important why? Because now we are talking about autoantibody. So, most of the autoimmune conditions are caused by the production of autoantibodies, in which the antibodies, the immune system, make the antibodies which started damaging the body own 
tissues or cells okay so uh, again uh, what happens that uh, uh, what you can say um, normally you know our immune system have the capacity or like it have a, a way to recognize its own proteins uh, like you know each cell have is uh, have some special proteins on their surfaces now what happened that sometimes the immune system they started making antibodies okay or you can say pathological antibodies right because they are not normal and now they cannot recognize or they they can recognize but i'm saying like they cannot recognize because now these antibodies they will start acting against the body own cells or they will start damaging the body own cells right so that's why we call them as auto antibodies now what is the cause of this thing you know that is not well understood uh, of course like the researchers they are doing researches and many things they found like they found environmental factors they found some specific genetic makeups like yesterday in rheumatology i was talking about hla dr4 okay so they found a lot of associations but again until now they fail to recognize you can say exactly why the body have autoimmune conditions so now guys see one very important concept to learn over here is what when someone have one autoimmune condition right when anyone have one autoimmune condition so there is a risk or there are chances or there are patients okay who have multiple autoimmune conditions for example whenever someone will present with rheumatoid arthritis we always look in them they are susceptible to get thyroid disorders or autoimmune thyroid disorders like graves disease they may have pernicious anemia which is an autoimmune condition in which the you know the intrinsic factor is not working fine and vitiligo you know in which their skin have multiple deep pigmentation patches so one very important concept is what when someone have one um, autoimmune condition they are susceptible to get more and more autoimmune conditions um, now i will talk about uh, in the next lecture that the condition called as systemic lupus erythematosus now systemic lupus erythematosus is, is a multi system disorder in which you will see like the auto antibodies are going to attack almost every system of the body hematology respiratory simply it will attack the blood it will attack the lungs it will attack the heart it will attack the kidneys it is it will attack skin it will attack cns it will attack everything okay so why because the auto antibodies are directed against the body own cells so uh, simply uh, the conditions which are formed uh, which are caused due to these things we call them as auto immune diseases right so uh, this is the thing and there are a lot of auto immune conditions in the body okay uh, now sometimes these auto antibodies they are organ specific so uh, for example i will give you the example of graves disease and now graves disease which is a thyroid disorder what is going on in this one that the auto antibodies are directed against thyroid only so that's why and see there is eye changes as well so the auto antibodies are you can say directed against a specific thing for example if the auto antibodies are directed against the endothelial lining or you can say they are going to cause vasculitis okay so what it means like the only the vessels will be involved right so there are many examples for different vasculitis as well so uh, this thing or the auto antibodies are directed against the skin i am saying the skin like of course something in the skin so it will cause vitiligo okay so like this way but sometimes you know the conditions that the auto antibodies are directed against multiple organs and of course they are going to cause multiple organ diseases for example 
I again I am saying you that telling you the same name that is systemic lupus erythematosus. Now, uh, of course, like you know, clinically, what we see in the patient is the sign and symptoms, clinical sign and symptoms, and then we we go for the investigation. So, anyone who have some clinical sign and symptoms of some kidney damage or some skin damage or some thyroid damage or whatever, like X Y Z, then of course we uh, what we do is like we go for investigations, we check for the auto uh, auto antibodies in the uh, body, and which we which which helps us in diagnose in diagnosing many of the conditions so uh, now uh, remember like this thing um, uh, it is always based on the sign and symptoms by which we go for investigations so simply we go like with history then we go for investigation examination and then we go for investigations so as you know you already had done uh, what you can say the um, Diagnostics in that one, if you know, like what is CRP now, CRP is C reactive protein, which increases in or ESR that is erythrocyte sedimentation rate that is going to increase in what that is going to increase in inflammatory processes. And now, the important thing is to tell you uh, what are the importance of these autoantibodies. Um, remember, guys, that to understand this thing completely you must be have a very good concept about what is sensitivity and what is specificity okay for example i talk about rheumatoid arthritis in that one i told you that rheumatoid factor it is sensitive but not specific because rheumatoid factor can be positive in multiple multiple conditions but on the other hand anti ccp is highly specific for rheumatoid arthritis so that's the important thing so it means what that rheumatoid factor when it comes back as positive it doesn't means that the patient have rheumatoid arthritis because many patients they do have rheumatoid factor positive but they don't have arthritis okay so this is very important thing to understand that a single auto antibody test is not diagnostic but it will lead you for further investigations or for further or 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 maybe the scenario can be like this that you had a patient who have some sign and symptoms and you're suspecting that the patient had sle or rheumatoid arthritis or scleroderma or vitiligo or xyz conditions so now you are going to consider that auto antibody testing to for what for making your suspicions correct or either to rule out that condition uh, when you will study sle you will come to know like the sle have a lot of auto antibodies they have a and a or anti-nuclear antibodies they have anti-ds dna that is anti-double stranded um, dna's antibody okay so uh, that's very important to understand right and there is like there are many 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 other auto antibodies so and now guys remember this thing like auto antibody tests are used for um, diagnosis okay they are used for diagnosis um, they can be used for to check the course of the condition uh, or the severity of the condition because sometimes when auto antibodies are present you know they, they, they tell like the disease can be severe rheumatoid arthritis i told you the patients who have rheumatoid factor positive they get more severe type of conditions and also we check um, uh, we also do this thing for uh, to check for progression of the condition okay so um, like how the condition is progressing or you can say we can also do auto antibodies test to um, see the um, effects of uh, uh, treatment okay so either the treatment you are giving is working or not um, now the important thing uh, uh, of course like in many of the books you will get a full 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 list of autoantibodies not all the autoantibodies you have to remember uh, and of course like I, I'm making this lecture just to um, you can say um, put all the autoantibodies together 
uh, when you are going to uh, uh, study this thing of course uh, uh, like maybe you forget what is NTCCP maybe you will forget what is RF or you will forget what is NTJLO or, or you can say you can forget what is um, anti lupus antibodies or anti phospholipid antibodies but um, like together it will be a good revision so see you can say over here um, okay now see like here there is you know anti uh, u1rnp right so this thing is written over here so what is rnp it is basically ribo uh, nucleo protein okay rnp is what ribo nucleo protein and you can see over here ntro okay now all this one have different names you know ntro are also called as ntssa okay so uh, uh, now you you will see like ntla ntsm sm is smith so all these one are what anti rna binding protein antibodies and anti anti dsna all these are collectively called as what ana anti nuclear antibodies so now what is anti nuclear antibodies so see as the name shows it is anti nuclear so these are antibodies which are going to bound to the cell nucleus okay so that's why they are named like this so they are anti nuclear so see there there are anti phospholipid there is anti lymphocyte anti thyroglobulin anti tpo so see they are anti thyroid so we had done this thing you know in in uh, endocrinology graves disease and all this one hashimotos and all this one anti hemocyanin cyanin so this is not important anti pl7 is not important why i'm saying not important i'm not saying this thing from my side but the, if you want to uh, recheck just see kaplan's they are not talking talking about these one okay so uh, when i'm saying like they, they are not talking about this one uh, what i mean to say there are almost no chances like you will get these questions on any basic exams okay so now um, for example i would like to start with ntro now ntro which are also called as ssa this is what this is a anti nuclear antibody right anti nuclear antibody now uh, of course like a lot of details will be available um, you can say about these one uh, you don't have to go in too much detail because no one is going to uh, tell you uh, like ask you these things uh, like what is NTRO, what it does, why? Because, you know, it's not needed. And uh, uh, simply you have to remember, like this one is present in what conditions, right? Or this one is specific for which, which conditions. So, uh, for example, I will tell you like, uh, you know, NTRO, uh, basically they target um, RO52 and RO60 proteins. Now, these are the proteins which they name on numbers, okay? So, um, now... Um, the important thing that this RO proteins, RO proteins, they are expressed on the cell surface or the cell membrane, you can say, and basically NTRO are directed against that. I'm, I'm telling you these details, though they are not important at all, okay? That's why I'm telling you. I'm telling you that how they name them, and I will not tell you the details of all these things. I'm just telling you the detail of this thing just to tell you, and no one will ask you, you know, what is RO, where they are expressed or what is their function because they are not important at all okay now the important thing about this one you can see over here that systemic sclerosis or um, here it is written you know um, sclero uh, scleroderma right uh, or uh, you can say here you will see um, sle and you are going to see uh, what you can say um, RA, which is rheumatoid arthritis, right? And now the important thing to I, I would like to mention you over here is that in front of this, these all, um, uh, what you are going to see is the percentage, okay? So what they are talking about here is like these one are positive in what, what kind of conditions, right? Uh, like uh, now again, see uh, why I was saying one line before, I said like you know these are not specific so when I said these are not specific uh, uh, there is a reason behind that thing because uh, 
see they are not present in all the patients right they are present in just 15% of the patients 32% of the patients 21% of the patients and of course like when you will when you will go if, if you if you are interested of course if you will read this thing in detail uh, you will found like you know uh, for example n t r o s s which are also called as s s a um, you can say like see they are found in almost 32% patient of sle many books will say like 50% and all this stuff like depending on the areas you just have to remember like they are specific to for what that's the important thing okay they are specific to what that's the thing which matters which you have to remember okay so now uh, this one uh, they are present in what conditions okay now you will see subacute cutaneous sle 974 percent Maybe only antibody present in A and in negative SLE. Okay. Increases risk of having child with neonatal lupus syndrome. Now, I will tell you the important thing to remember about this one. You have to remember, guys, a very favorite question is what? They ask that there was a child who was born with, or there is a mother who have N-T-R-S-S-A-R-O. So remember that they increase the risk of neonatal lupus syndrome and whenever the babies they are born with this thing they have congenital heart blocks this is the most important information you have to remember about this one leave this numbers on the same hand if you will see ntla which is also called as ssb okay now this one what is the importance of this one that this is present okay uh, in children syndrome okay oh, sorry this one is children syndrome ss and uh, this is systemic sclerosis okay this one is systemic sclerosis sorry like in the start like uh, that time you like there was something in my mind but this is children syndrome so uh, usually occurs with ntro so see they both occur together specific for see sp this thing is important so specific for what children syndrome Okay, and SLE when NTRO is also positive. Increased risk of having child with neonatal lupus syndrome. So what is the importance of this, of this thing? That these are highly specific for what? Children's syndrome. Then there is, um, you can say, antiphospholipid antibodies, right? Now, antiphospholipid antibodies um, are uh, important to remember. Why? Because they... Uh, okay, they, like their importance basically is more um, related to what you can say gynecological patients. Okay, uh, why, if, uh, like again, you are going to study that thing in gynecology. Um, like basically, these are the females who have multiple, uh, what you can say, um, abortions. Okay, so, um, uh, and the details, of course, I don't want to uh, talk now because like our topic will be on that side uh, which is like of course not um, you can say uh, important right now for you guys so anti phospholipid antibodies when they are present basically they call they cause something called as anti phospholipid syndrome right and as i told you gynecologically they these are the females who have multiple um, abortions okay um, so see this one anti-phospholipid syndrome 100% okay so by definition present in what anti-phospholipid syndrome only small subset of cellular patient develop clinical syndrome of anti-phospholipid antibodies and if positive will often get a false positive VDR test now this thing is something which you cannot encounter in the basic exam but this is something you can encounter easily that a female with multiple uh, what you can say uh, abortions what could be the reason and their antiphospholipid antibodies come back as positive then there is antihistones okay now antihistones uh, antibodies if you will see a very important things which you have to remember see the thing is written over here they are highly specific for drug induced SLE and you will you can get a question like this simply that they will say that you know someone who was using some drug okay and they will give you the drug now maybe you cannot remember all the drug which can cause lupus 
okay for the we call it as drug induced lupus maybe you cannot remember the name of all those drugs okay but if they will say that anti histone antibodies are positive guys done your choice should be drug induced lupus okay drug induced sl your drug induced lupus of course there is a list of drugs which can cause for example um most of the patients who are procainamide procainamide you know um uh, this is a drug which we can give for the rhythm problems as well or isoniazid so these things you know uh isoniazid we give for uh, the treatment of many conditions especially tuberculosis so that it comes positive so again like there is a lot of drugs so whenever you found anti histone positive done it is drug induced lupus then there is anti rnp i already told you what is rnp it is uh, ribonucleoprotein okay now see high titers present in mixed connective tissue disease mctd present in many of the ctds as well especially sle but you have to remember it right mctd because this one mostly where we check in mixed connective tissue disease okay so again that that's a autoimmune type of condition then there is anti centromere now um, if you remember i show show you this one see these all are what ans anti stone is also ana anti ds dna is what also what they are directed against what the nucleus now anti centromere antibodies now anti centromere antibodies guys remember just one thing they are present mostly in crest syndrome now what is crest syndrome um again i will uh, if i have time i will, can cover that but crest syndrome is basically um we say like these these people uh, they have calcinosis c for calcinosis r for raynaud's phenomena e for esophageal dysmotility s is for sclerodactyly their skin in the fingers are tight and t is for telangiectasias so the combination of these symptoms and signs we call it as crest syndrome okay it is also called as the cutaneous variant of systemic sclerosis systemic sclerosis affect all the body this one is the cutaneous variant which affect mostly the skin so they are very much specific for what crest syndrome so if you will get a question in which they say that you know anti centromere antibodies are positive again done you catch the thing anti topo isomerase antibodies now this one you have to remember for systemic sclerosis diffuse one okay this is the cutaneous variant this is a diffuse one see specific for systemic sclerosis and whenever they are present these patients get more pulmonary problem or pulmonary fibrosis anti jo1 okay this antibody is not so important but remember whenever uh, because you know like the, they give the questions about polymyositis or dermatomyositis in a different way uh, of course like these are rheumatological conditions which basically cause myositis but uh, they they basically give uh, a photograph or uh, the knuckles they like the, this one polymyositis and dermatomyositis they give rashes on the knuckles and a helicotref trof rash type of rash also so uh, like they always ask this disease from that point of view but of course like they are present in this one okay and these percentage what what, what they are written is here is simply they are like this one denotes like uh, how many healthy patients they have this thing healthy people so you can see like these one are not present in healthy people but ro can present in 0.5% of healthy people antiphospholipid less than 5% of the healthy people they have this thing but they don't have disease okay and after that there is cnk and pnk now cnk and pnk again are very 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 important so what is cnk um uh, remember this thing guys um cnk which is like the name given to them um nk is anti uh, neutrophilic uh, cyto and neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies okay we call it as nk and this one um if you will see over here uh, cnk and pnk now there are conditions which are basically um vasculitis okay uh, 
called as Wegener's, uh, Wegener's uh, what you can say, uh, Wegener's uh, granulomatosis. Uh, there is uh, um, that one microscopic polyangitis. There is Schwarzstrass syndrome. Okay, so all these uh, antibodies are present here. So C and K, okay, C and K are basically called as cytoplasmic because these one are directed against cytoplasm. So they are also called as PR3 NK, PR3 NK. So antineutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies. Now uh, this one, uh, like remember, whenever they are present, okay, uh, just make the diagnosis of um, Wegener's granulomatosis because they are mostly present in that one CNK is present in Wegener's granulomatosis or and now nowadays they name they change the name of that condition to granul granulomatous with polyangitis so this is the new name but still the books they give it like the name of Wegener's granulomatosis and PNK uh, which is basically perinuclear anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies they are also called as MPONK okay they are also called as MPONK now these one they are non-specific and poor sensitivity but they are found in many conditions and uh, polyarthritis nodosa microscopic polyangitis Schwarzschild syndrome and rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis which we have already done so now they are present in many conditions right um, other than that, guys, uh, there is uh, um, anti-MI2, leave this thing, like, why I'm saying leave this thing, because very, very, very rare, like, I, I think there are almost no chances, no one will ask you, because I told you, dermatomyositis, they, they ask you uh, from some other way. Uh, and there are antibodies against RBCs, WBCs, or platelets in SLE, and for them, you will be performed direct Coombs test. You, if you remember Coombs test, why we perform? We perform it to catch the antibodies. Then there is anti-mitochondrial -mit antibodies. Uh, like this one is present in primary biliary cholangitis. And they are highly sensitive as well as specific. Guys, there are many other antibodies like um, uh, anti-LKMA, uh, liver, kidney, uh, muscle antibodies. There is antithyroid antibodies, okay, which we have already done. Um, there is, okay, uh, when you will study different paraneoplastic syndromes, like uh, there are many antibodies which are directed against the cerebel cerebellum. They are called as anti-who, anti-yo, anti-lu, like, I don't think so, like, uh, you, you, you should remember even at this stage, okay. There is anti-smooth muscle antibodies, which are basically present in, um, chronic um, hepatitis there is anti mitochondria like the thing over here right so they are also like uh, the antibodies there is anti actin antibodies but two of the antibodies uh, which uh, I would like to explain over here uh, two or three antibodies which I would like to explain over here but they are not present written over here is uh, basically because you know we have to we already done uh, rheumatoid arthritis and we are going to do SLE. I talk about rheumatoid factor, right? And you know what is that? Uh, like they are sensitive but not specific. Okay, they are sensitive to what? Rheumatoid uh, arthritis. I talk about this one in my previous lecture and they can be present in many other conditions. SLE, um, Sjodren syndrome and all this one. I already talk about anti-CCP, right? And they are highly specific for what? Rheumatoid arthritis. Then there is ANA. Now, ANA, which is anti-neutrophilic antibodies, they are highly sensitive for SLE. So, highly sensitive for SLE. But they are not specific, guys, because they are present in so many conditions. ANA can be positive in mixed corrective tissue disease. It can be positive, uh, positive in Sjogren's syndrome. It can be positive in Crest syndrome. It can be present in much of the healthy population as well. Okay, then there is anti um, DS DNA, which we are going to study in the next lecture when we'll study SLE. So remember, guys, they are highly specific for SLE. Okay, and uh, then there is anti SM. 
okay so ntsm again uh, they can they they are specific but they are not sensitive for sle they are not highly the most specific one is ntds dna okay so ntsm they can be their specific uh, for sle okay uh, and whenever it is it come back as positive they stay positive all through all the course of sle so that's all guys for about this lecture i told you it's a lot uh, short lecture but you know um uh, like it is going to uh, you you will it will help you in solving many of the exam questions related to like autoantibodies so thank you so much for listening i will see you in the next lecture